Wait, hey, it's Robert Johnson here. Hope you're having a good day. I'm, I am, I'm having, it's really exciting. It's just because now we're at the place where we're starting the spiraling staircase. And we've been calling it spiraling staircase, but now actually looking at it with the, uh, the uh, dimensions and the space, it's more like a spiraling ladder. And I'll get to that in a second, but I'll just show you the process of uh, starting these stairs and uh, what I'm going to be doing. Um, here, if you take a look at the original floor plan, um, we hear where you enter in from the barrel door with all the carvings and you come in the kitchen. Um, I have, we had designed the spiraling uh, ladder, spiraling staircase to be right here. And um, the distance, just so that we had a uh, comfortable distance between the kitchen cabinetry and the pole of the spiraling staircase. We, I had to make it so that my treads were uh, 24 inches. Now, because it's 24 inches, just imagine, because I'm working from a point here, that 24 inches, it doesn't allow me to get a proper rise and run. And this is why it's not considered a stair anymore, because a proper stair, you need to work to a rule of uh, 7 and 10, 7 rising and, and 10 for your treads. Because of here, I wasn't able to do it. It's now considered a ladder because my rise, um, as I'm coming up each tread, it's rising greater so that I can keep in the space that I have here. Now, if I wanted to um, make it so it was proper, my radius would have to be a lot bigger. And let me just show you what that would look like in on the floor plan. So when you're doing spiraling, um, you're working from a, a pivot point point so here you have your circle and uh, let's just put a point right here now if you had a, a big uh, diameter normally when you um, let's say that this is the top you're going going to normally what you do is you start about here and it instead of uh, um, it's a 180 so you're starting here and you're climbing your stairs as it goes up 180 to do that you actually need the proper height. So the proper height um, of floor to the next level, you'll have eight feet. But because this is a tiny house, most lofts are set, set around um, seven feet underneath. So to do that, as you were climbing, could you imagine climbing and you're having to go a full rotation, you're actually having to duck underneath the loft. And those were some of the challenges that we had to face. How do we do that so we're not having to duck? And the thing that to eliminate that is um, looking back down here on the floor plan is um, I couldn't actually swing it out um, for a 180 where you start here and then you end up at the top here. I have to do it in 90 degrees. So that means here um, I'm working with a 90 degree angle right here and I'm entering here and coming at the top of the loft right here. So now what I had to do now that I have a certain space, um, I cut my treads and I used 2x6 fur and I made it so that my radius was 24 inches from here to this pivot point. Now to, to swing it, I'll just show you what I did was with each 2x6 I made a center line on the flat of it so it stuck out like that. And I did the same thing on the top, like that. So now that I had a center line on that, now I had something that I was able to pivot each tread. And for seven feet tall, if you take to the top of the loft, seven feet being right up here, if you divide seven into how many treads you're gonna have, and in this case, swinging, swinging 90 degrees on that pivot, and with a two by six giving me at the furthest point, the, the widest point at the end of the tread was around seven inches. Um, that gave me seven treads. So that means that I have eight risers to the top of that. So 784 divided by um, eight, eight risers gives me 10 and a half inches of uh, actual rise. So now what that means is, I'll just show you here. Um, this is a, a picture looking down at it, and I'm just going to draw um, when you're looking at it on half. Um, here we have the loft 
up above and then it goes down and then here you have the floor and from here to here we have 7 feet 84 inches now if you take that by the amount of rises that you that you have that would be eight rises so that um, that would be seven treads so one two three four five six seven you have obviously that's not to, to scale I'm sorry but anyway you have that's how many times you rise one two three four five six seven eight until you get to the top so every 10 inches just imagine um, now with that with that amount of uh, rise 10 and a half inches that's now considered a, a ladder uh, proportion a ladder is usually runs of 12 inches high and the rule that they set the ladders is that a uh, fireman's rule is you stand at the bottom of the ladder and when your toes hit the bottom of the ladder and you put your arms straight out you want to be able to grab that and you want to be able to stand 90 um, where you're where you're pair or where you're standing straight with the ladder now that gives you a proper sit comfort height as you climb so now that I'm considering that into the staircase I want to consider now how what is it going to be like so now this is turning into like an artsy ladder it's basically twisting and it's going to be really cool so um, just to come back to here um, now with it uh, um, turning up um, and I'm turning 90 degrees of 24 inches and I know now that I have seven treads so I took um, uh, seven two by six and I or I took um, uh, a two a two by six eight footers and I cut a bunch of them down until I got 24 inches and then I took seven of those pieces at 24 and then I just laid them out on the ground um, on top of each other so that I had um, I had it so it was evenly spaced with this uh, 90 degree turn on the arc there so that gave me so there is seven seven treads going up there so now that I had all those laid out and they were all on the pivot point um, what I did there was this piece I took a 4x4 four four, which was going to be my post and I laid it on top a, a small chunk I laid it on top of that and that gave me um, the distance of where I was to cut on that bottom or on the top piece and then I removed that top piece and I went down to the next one and with that same arc and angle I cut out on this piece that shape that that one was going to be and then I moved that one and I did the same thing going down once I had that I was able to cut on the two by six um, each of these pieces were basically because I'm working to a point sanding down um, just slightly in the corners to be able to get that that arc because if two by um, when you cut them they're all straight like that so you want it to be able to follow that curve and my idea is to to line this with plywood on the outside so now let me just show you what it looks like so far and so far now we have the post and I have it so that um, I made notches um, ten and a half rises so I marked all my spaces so that they were all evenly coming down and then I notched out um, a depth so that each of these treads set in to the four by four um, that way it gives me a, um, a lot of strength this thing is just solid and then I screwed in from the back to and, and glued that connection as it was notched in there you can kind of see how it's notched in that this is what gives it the true strength and now looking at it from this angle you can kind of see how that this is uh, turning and now that I have my 90 degree turn um, the, the next step was getting the plywood on here and I would highly recommend with that type of radius of 24 inches it was actually really hard for me to bend this uh, first 3 8 so I wouldn't recommend using quarter inch I actually had to stop the first layer go into town and get a quarter inch piece of plywood to finish the rest of the layers. So what you see here now is three layers, um, two other layers glued onto that three eighths. 
So now what that gives me is now that the glue set, the torque has been taken out of the plywood, I'm going to cut now at the back of my treads all the way um, down so that the, the skirt on the end of the treads is going to twist and follow the treads. It's going to look really sharp, but uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see any more of the finished product and uh, what else we're doing, uh, please uh, um, take a look at the website and watch YouTube videos. Uh, yeah, it's really exciting. All right. Buruch. So now you can kind of see how that uh, curve is happening there. Now what I do is I'm just going to belt sand that nice and even so the curve is not waving. It's just an even flow. And then I'm going to take a scribing block and then follow that bend on the front of the risers. All right, beautiful. Beautiful.